results Rowie's office and people often ask how long does it take to get results from exercise in fact it's probably one of the most important questions because if you're going to do something you want to know how long is it going to take and will I get the result that I want I want to give you some really great examples of how quickly our product of exercise works and what an amazing product it is. Sometimes I think we forget as exercise professionals the power of exercise. So I want to give you a personal example. My mother was diagnosed with advanced osteoporosis at 74 years of age and she was old and sick. Not only did she have advanced osteoporosis, but she had coronary heart disease, type 2 diabetes, really bad asthma, really bad arthritis. She was in really bad shape, uh, which is embarrassing for me to say because she was my mother. But one of the challenges we're all going to have as exercise professionals is that often our family doesn't listen to what we've got to say or the message that we're giving to our family can be a little bit complicated. And I take full responsibility for that because I, at the first part of my career, uh, and I'll give you an example. My mother thought that to go to the gym, she needed to wear a G-string leotard. Now, she'd never been to the gym. Uh, she'd just seen me wear one of those, so she thought that she did too. So it was going to be, I'm not going to the gym because I don't want to wear one of those leotards with a string in your bum. So, <laughs> my mother, with much, uh, how do I explain it, uh, inspiration from K-Man, it certainly wasn't from me, when she was diagnosed with advanced osteoporosis, she started strength training uh, under K-Man's beautiful uh, wing of passion and enthusiasm. Uh, he got her, literally threw her walking stick away, didn't let her get into the walking frame that the orthopedic surgeon had given her, and we got her into an exercise program. So advanced osteoporosis, coronary heart disease, type 2 diabetes, she was a mess, and at the age of 80, when she had another bone mineral density test, remember osteoporosis, an advanced osteoporosis is your bones are really weak. At 80, the orthopedic surgeon looked at her results for her bone mineral density test and said, we need to run the test again because there's something wrong with the test or your original test was wrong because you don't have advanced osteoporosis anymore. You only have slight osteopenia, which is what most women have if they've been dieting. Uh, because obviously when you diet, you lose, uh, you, you're not getting the nutrients that you need. And there's a lot of women that have been dieting all of their lives. I share that with you because in such a short period of time, and literally from 74 to 80, because that was when she had her next test, uh, she literally got rid of her advanced osteoporosis, a debilitating disease that kills women uh, and takes away their quality of life if it doesn't put them in the ground. It just take, it kills their life. And my mother got rid of it by doing exercise. Uh, that's, I think that's really exciting. Let's go a little step further than that. Uh, there was a really great documentary done in New Zealand of a lady that had uh, type 2 diabetes and she was heading in for a, a kidney transplant. So her type 2 diabetes was, was in really at the, at the late stages. And by pure chance, she went to a community exercise class and she started exercising. And a woman that was going in for serious, expensive, life-threatening surgery in eight weeks went from type 2 diabetes, fully blown, got to have a new kidney, to completely cure it. She had no more type 2 diabetes. Remembering that type 2 diabetes is elevated blood sugar where your arteries get clogged, your hoses get clogged up and your body stops working literally. And in such a short period of time, uh, I, I just get excited about that. No medication, no surgery, no horrible things going on, just exercise. And the human body can get healthy in a matter of weeks from such a debilitating disease. Uh, I want to go a step further than that because people say, how quickly can I lose weight? Uh, the the recommendation, of course, for weight loss at a, at, the, at a speed, how quickly should I lose weight, is somewhere between half a kilo to a kilo a week. But I want to go a step further than that because I think weight loss is one of the silliest things that we talk about ever. It's one of the most talked about topics. It's one of the most Googled questions, how do I lose weight? But ultimately, do we really want to lose weight? And I always ask these questions. If I lose water weight, I'm going to be dehydrated and my body's not going to work very well. And there's plenty of diets that will dehydrate us. If I lose muscle, which is what a lot of diets do because we're not getting enough food, so our metabolism slows down, so our muscles waste away, uh, 
why would you want to lose muscle? It's the engine of your body. Yes, it's heavy. Yes, it weighs a lot. But if you lose muscle, you slow down your metabolism and you reduce your ability to do everything in your life. So I don't want to lose water weight. I don't want to lose muscle weight. I don't want to lose bone weight. I don't want thin bones. That's called osteoporosis and that's a disease. Uh, and we, they're three really interesting things that when you weigh yourself, you don't know. Is it water that I've lost? Is it muscle that I've lost? Is it bone that I've lost? Is it a combination of all three? How about when we talk about weight loss, what if we talk about energy increase? What if we talk about how do you feel? What do we talk about, uh, talk about how do your clothes look? I want to give you a really interesting example about that. Having managed health clubs all of my life, uh, really interesting to see, and you might have seen this too. Somebody comes to the gym, they've never been to the gym before, they're really nervous about coming to the gym. Like my mother, they might think they have to wear a G-string leotard. And they come into the gym wearing a big baggy tracksuit, a hoodie, long sleeves, and they're completely covered up. And they're really, it's a tough experience to come to the gym. And if they've come to a gym where they've, they're made to feel welcome, and they get a great exercise program that they can stick to and it doesn't kill them within one session, and they keep coming to the gym. Have you noticed, and this has happened to me literally thousands of times, the person that started on day one wearing tracksuit, big baggy pants, big hoodie, within a week they're coming to the gym and they might be wearing long shorts and a long t-shirt. And in another week, they're wearing shorter shorts and a shorter t-shirt. And within a month, they're wearing shorts and a singlet. And within a very short period of time, they're wearing bike pants and a crop top. Now, the interesting thing about that is the person's body shape in that period of time, if you're talking about weight loss or body fat loss or change of body shape, not too much has happened in that time frame. But is it possible that their headspace has completely changed? The person that came into the gym feeling, uh, I've got low self-esteem, I'm lacking confidence, I'm scared of what people will think of me, uh, I'm scared of coming to the gym, I've never done this before, this horrible experience. Uh, once they start exercising and their brain chemistry changes, and I think that's the really important thing about exercise that as exercise professionals, we just don't focus on enough. We talk about 12 week challenges or in eight weeks you'll lose this much weight or if you go and if you go on this diet or, and do this exercise program, you'll get these results in this period of time. But what about the immediate effect of the chemistry change in our brain? And I'll go back to the example of wearing shorts and a singlet. Even if your body shape hasn't changed very much, what has changed? Is it possible, <coughs> excuse me, I get excited, that the person that came to the gym feeling uh, uninspired, demotivated, overweight, out of shape and scared of everybody in a, such a short period of time, five or six weeks, not their body hasn't changed that much, but they've gone from being completely covered up to ver feeling very comfortable wearing bike pants and a crop top. And to watch that process in such a short period of time, I just think that's our product. That's what exercise does for people. It makes them feel good. So that's five to six weeks. You can get rid of coronary heart disease in seven, eight, ten weeks. Uh, type two diabetes, seven, eight, ten weeks. Osteoporosis, uh, depending on how often you get a bone mineral density test done. But for my, for my mother, it was uh, six years and it was gone. Uh, I think it was gone quicker than that. It was just that she didn't have a test sooner than that. But here's the interesting thing: Why don't we promise people the immediate effect of exercise? It's instant. Let me ask this question. When you exercise, every single time that you exercise, how do you feel? <laughs> After you've exercised, when you've got the, all of these chemicals, and I love rattling them off because to me they're the most exciting drugs in the world. When you've exercised, particularly at high intensity where you've lifted heavy, you've got puffed or a combination of both, your brain fills up with dopamine, which is a reward neurotransmitter. You feel good because you've done something for yourself. You feel that you are, have rewarded yourself, your own human body. So you feel really good. So dopamine. Serotonin is a satisfaction neurotransmitter. It makes you feel good about your life. Even if nothing's changed in your life, you just feel good about it. It's like you can handle a challenge because 
yep, I'm exercised, I feel good about myself, I can bring it on, I can handle anything. So dopamine and serotonin, the beautiful one with endorphins, is that yes, they're a happy drug and they make you feel good, but they're a painkiller. So your body actually produces a neurotransmitter to help you exercise without any pain. How do we get through a, I ask people, how do you do an Ironman? How do you do a marathon? It's called endorphins and that rush at the end of exercise, that endorphin rush that is produced from exercise. It's just, uh, it's not called a, a walking high. It's not called a gardening high. It's called a runner's high. That's the, the typical response for endorphins is when you exercise really hard, your body produces the chemistry that you need to be able to do it and to be able to do it pain-free. But the really big one that I get really excited about is brain-derived neurotropic factor, which is fertilizer for your brain. So when you exercise, and particularly again at high intensity, 100% effort for 100% result, when you get puffed and lift heavy, your body produces not only those chemicals, but brain-derived neurotropic factor is fertilizer to make those chemicals work better. So when you have fertilizer on serotonin, dopamine, oxytocin, brain uh, endorphins, they all work together more effectively because you put fertilizer in there. And that comes from an immediate, it's an immediate response. And I'll ask the question again, how do you feel after you exercise? You feel rewarded, you feel satisfied, you feel high, and your brain is working at its best. It'll ever work because neurotrans, uh, the neurotransmitters that cause neuroplasticity and neurogenesis, so you change the way you think and you can grow new brain cells, that all happens immediately. Uh, we talk about how long does it take to lose weight? How long does it take to get into shape? How long before I can fit into my jeans? How long before I can get into the dress that I haven't worn for six years? How about this? Every time you exercise, you've got to feel amazing. <laughs> and I ask that question of you. How, how do you feel after you exercise? And wouldn't you love everybody to feel that way? Uh, regardless of the, the beautiful side effects from exercise, and I love rattling those off as well. Yes, you'll have better self-confidence, self-esteem, great hair, great skin, great nails, strong teeth, bright eyes. You'll have better posture. You'll have a body that, that can fight germs, bugs, viruses, and diseases. You'll have skin that's clearer and has less challenges with any of the skin challenges that we get. You'll, you'll be a fast fat burning, calorie burning, sugar burning, carbohydrate burning machine. That's why you get rid of type 2 diabetes so quickly. Uh, your body becomes a high performance machine. That's the side effect of exercise. But the major response to exercise is this neurotransmission of chemicals that change the way we think and the way we feel. And that is immediate. And this is how immediate it is. And I share this passionately and I, I share it... Oh, every day probably to everybody that will listen. Uh, because I didn't study my anatomy and physiology when I first started as an exercise professional and I did a whole heap of stupid exercises, now as a young, fit, strong old lady, uh, when I wake up in the morning, uh, literally, and I'd love you to see it, it's hilarious, I actually can't, I would love to jump out of bed, but I can't. I, 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 it's very difficult for me to get out of bed in the morning because all my joints are broken. So I waddle, uh, limp, <laughs> uh, aim to get myself to the cross trainer. That's the first thing I do every morning. So I, I uh, out of bed, <laughs> get to the cross trainer, and I go flat out on the cross trainer. And the, there's a reason for the cross trainer, because there's no pounding, obviously. I would never get on a bike because I hate sitting down. So a cross trainer is in the upright position without any pounding on your joints. And I go as hard as I can for 10 seconds. And there's a reason for the 10 seconds. I don't have to measure it. When you go as hard as you can at anything, you can't go for longer than 10 seconds. After 10 seconds, you start getting that burning sensation, which is lactic acid. And if you go really hard, you'll start feeling sick. And I'm not interested in either of those. Uh, so I go as hard as I can, and it's, and it's always around about 10 seconds. And then I, I get off the cross trainer and I walk like a normal human being. So I, I struggle to get to the cross trainer in the morning because my joints are all broken. And I just, as a sp special side note, please don't do that to anybody. I did that to myself and I take full responsibility for doing stupid exercises that wreck my joints. But I know better now. And as an exercise professional, I would feel irresponsible to give people exercises that break their joints so that, that when they are old like I am, their, jo their joints don't work. I'm just very privileged that I've worked my way around it. So
So first thing in the morning, cross trainer, here's the time frame, 10 seconds. In 10 seconds, I go from an old lady that can't walk to a young, fit, strong, can take the world on. So I do that two or three times every morning. I don't have to do it two or three times. I just love the brain response that I get. So first thing in the morning, I get synovial fluid pumping through my joints from 10 seconds of exercise. I pump my brain full of dopamine, serotonin, brain-derived neurotropic factor and endorphins. So I start my day with a body that's on fire. It's powerful to be powered throughout the day. And I have a brain that's full of chemicals that say, Roa, you can take on the world and win today. And that happens in 10 seconds. So when people say to me, how long does it take to get a result from exercise? My answer is as simple as that, 10 seconds. So many people talk to me, make excuses, and I'm sure they do to you too, about I've got no time to exercise, I'm too busy, my life is too busy, all of that. In that same breath, a lot of people will complain about I'm out of shape, I don't feel good, I've got no energy, I've put on a stack of weight. Those two excuses of no time and I'm too busy, obviously they're the same thing, 10 seconds takes all of that away. 10 seconds of anything, and your brain and your body obviously doesn't know whether you're skipping or sprinting on the spot or doing jump squats or punching a bag or running up some stairs or running through soft sand or cross trainer or whatever it is that you want to do. There's a stack of exercise you can do to get puffed, but all you have to do is 10 seconds of high intense activity and your complete body chemistry changes. It changes. So how long does it take to get a result from exercise, Rowie? 10 seconds. What that 10 seconds does, and I use this example all the time, I like to do four puffs an hour, four puffs an hour, sometimes more. Uh, at the moment, it's getting really chilly, fresh and cool in the South Island of New Zealand. So often during the day, it's more than every 15 minutes because it's cold. So I jump on the cross trainer to get warm in a hurry. And isn't it interesting how 10 seconds of, of going as hard as you can, and I get off that thing and I'm warm again, even if I got on there and I was shivering and cold. That's one of the excuses that people use for not exercising, it's too cold. And we obviously they use the excuse of it's too hot. There's no excuse for 10 seconds. Even if it's really hot and you go as hard as you can for 10 seconds, you still won't get that. You'll get really puffed, but you won't get sweaty because it's only 10 seconds. And you can get puffed doing uh, anything that makes you puffed and you can wear anything. So you can have high heel shoes, bare feet, thongs, slippers, doesn't matter. I often do, obviously first thing in the morning, I do my cross trainer in my pyjamas and my slippers. And it gets me going for the day. I'm asking very personally and very passionately, obviously. As an exercise professional, as a parent, as a teacher, as a coach, a person who wants people to be healthy, fit and strong, have a stack of energy and perform at their best. Don't we have the responsibility to understand how that chemistry works? Don't I feel that I have the responsibility and I didn't at the start. As an exercise professional, I didn't learn my anatomy and I didn't learn my physiology. I didn't understand how the endocrine system and the central nervous system work together to fire up the skeletal and the muscular system and the cardiovascular and respiratory system. Then, of course, the immune system, the digestive system, and how they all work together to give us a high-performing machine. I'm learning every day. I will never say I understand the endocrine system or I understand the central nervous system or I understand all of those things. I'm just learning every day. And I'm passionate about learning because I love what exercise does. All of those things that exercise does, if we could put it into a pill, it would be the highest-selling pill in the world. It's interesting because just today I heard a, a dietitian share with the world that uh, she every person that comes into her office, they're not interested in exercise and healthy eating. They just want a pill. Well, this pill of exercise, I think it's the ultimate medication and the top medical professionals are calling it that and I share this with passion almost every day as well. Exercise is medicine and medicine is exercise. There is nothing that exercise won't help Exercise is the best medicine for everything. Whether it's your self-esteem and self-confidence, so you feel better about yourself, right through to getting rid of pimples or, or not getting pimples in the first place, to having a body that's a high-performance machine, burns calories fast, uh, fights germs, bugs, viruses, and diseases. Exercise is the best medicine for everything. And I'll go a step further than that because... 
when we talk about results from exercise, one of the most horrible things I think that the world has given the human body, and I don't know, there's a lot of argument about where it comes from. But we have a disease called cancer, and it's become a, a, a just it's just too common now. So many people have, have and I will share with you, I, Rowie, I've got cancer. Whether it's uh, and there's obviously a whole heap of them. The medical professionals share with me that about 80% of cancers are preventable if you're healthy, fit and strong. If you're fit and strong and you stay healthy, very unlikely that you'll get cancer. So there's 80% of cancers that are completely preventable. Uh, the interesting That means that exercise prevents them. Let's just say that 80% of cancers, if you're fit and strong and you only get fit and strong from exercise, you, there's 80% of cancers you just won't get. Uh, the one, the horrible ones that that are just bad luck or whatever, whatever it is. The hor- I don't know. I don't, I don't understand why it, this horrible disease exists. But the top medical professionals who are studying exercise or the effect of exercise on cancer will share this absolutely passionately. When you are diagnosed with cancer, the first thing you need to do is get really fit and really strong, because when you're fit and strong, you can fight cancer more effectively. You can have higher doses of chemotherapy. The cancer is less likely to come back once you get rid of it. There's a whole heap of beautiful side effects of being fit and strong when you go into something horrible like a, a, a terminal, and what is so-called so a terminal disease. And even if it is terminal, so many people have shared that if they're fit and if they're strong, their quality of life is so much better, even if they've got a horrible disease. So the results that we get from exercise, they are amazing. How quickly do we get them? I I would say immediately, after 10 seconds, you can feel good. But the really horrible diseases, even injuries, I haven't even touched on that. When you're fit and strong, your body recovers so much faster because you've got great circulation, you've got a stronger immune system, your body can fight for that injury. So whether it's a broken ankle or you've got a a strained shoulder or you've got some kind of injury that's happened from sport, you will recover quicker when you're fit and strong. How fast do we get results? How fast? Immediate. Everything is better when we exercise. Every part of our life is better when we're fit and strong. That's why I'm so proud to be an exercise professional. That's why I love to call myself Results Rowie because when people say, Rowie, how quickly can I get results from my exercise? My answer is this. 10 seconds, four puffs an hour, four puffs an hour. What a great uh, prescription for feeling good, for being healthy, for getting fit. And if you want to get fit, you've got to get puffed, but you can't get puffed at maximum effort if you've got a weak body. So you've got to get strong and you've got to get fit. You've got to get strong, you've got to get fit, you've got to lift heavy, you've got to get puffed. And when you do that, that is the ultimate prescription for results immediate results and long-term results. So if you want to stay young and strong for long, you've got to get fit and strong, get puff, lift heavy, be fit and strong and get results fast, 10 seconds, woohoo! Ha 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 ha!